But you blood now? You think you can ride with us? Welcome to Raw Down. Hey, April 3rd, 2006, you guys survived WrestleMania. Can you believe it? No, not really. No. Yeah, we really didn't survive that. We kind of we kind of just been uh, laying in wait for uh, about a month and a half. Man, what a fucking chore that was, having to sit through four hours to see John Cena tap out Triple H. Man, can you imagine them making, like, Raw three hours? Wouldn't that just be Yeah, that would be awful. Let's not ever have that happen. Please. Exactly. Hey, Triple H uh, would never let that happen. He, he doesn't like 30-minute main events. This is true. He also doesn't like 20-minute opening promos. Also true. And to start off the show... We get a 40-minute promo. So, dun-dun-dun, the music hits. It's his time, because his time is now. You can't see him, because his time is now. It's John Cena. He got his he comes iconic out look with there, the too. Belt. Yep, his iconic look. He comes out with the belt, and he's basically like, Sup, everybody? And they're all like, yay! And... You know, he's definitely getting more of his mixed reaction, and I don't blame him that he probably got more negative reaction from that uh, slog of a main event last night. What do you what do you think that, like, changed this? Because I don't remember earlier on in Raw Down this being, like, this drastically negative Cena. I think there's two things to it. One, I think that that main event buildup was so bad... And the match had such little heat that I think the fans honestly can kind of see that they're pushing Cena pretty damn hard. And I think when they see that it's like, oh, this isn't because we chose him. This is the company guy. They get kind of pissy about it. Is this the first time it's happened? Uh, or in a long time? Yeah, it, like, th- like it's been in and out. So, like, Cena's been kind of like... Like, it's been definitely going this way. I mean, I, I again, I did a whole little dissertation on his intel culture and how he represents America. But, like, realistically, he's been pretty on and off, depending on the city. You know? Um, I find, like, I think some of the harder wrestling cities boo him a little more. But for the most part, he was kind of getting cheered more only. You could hear some of the boos. It's definitely was starting during when we started. But I think we are starting to get in Super Cena territory. I do think they're starting to get tired of him. It's just and... bizarre seeing like the the Mania set too, because we're in the same arena. We're back in yeah. Chicago, baby. Yeah, and it's uh, well, we never laughed. Yeah, and you know, it's clear that they're kind of getting tired of him. I don't think they wanted Triple H to win, but I think they wanted somebody to win. And you know, John Cena, he's doing his old song and dance. And Triple H comes out. And Triple H brings the most personality to this fucking feud. Because <laughs> we've talked about it repeatedly. This has been the most dead build-up to WrestleMania I've ever witnessed. And to be honest, Triple H comes in. He's got He's got some jokes. He's got some stuff. He's got the nice suit. I don't know. I feel like he's a little more involved now. And he goes in and he's like, John Cena, you know what? You did tap me out. I did lose. But that's because I made the same mistake everyone else made. I underestimated you. And they all kind of cracked at that. Like, oh, but that's not going to happen again because I'm the game. And he was going to go in a long rat. But then all of a sudden, da, 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 Edge they comes out. They didn't have his music play. He just kind of was like, hey. Hey, I thought they did. No, <laughs> Triple H got his intro, but not not. You're Edge. right. No, not no, Edge. you're right. I'm thinking of uh, yeah. I'm thinking of uh, when he comes out later. You're right. He does. He just comes out and he's got the arm wrap because he kind of got beat to shit and his head's still bleeding on one side and the other side is bandaged. He basically comes out and he's like, "Whoa, why do you get another shot?" Because that was the last thing Triple H said. He's like, "I." want another shot <laughs> and then edges music hit and he's like why are we letting a loser a loser get another shot when winners like me someone who beat a future hall of famer mick foley deserves the belt and you know 
and him and Triple H started swiveling in a little bit at each other. Uh, you know, Edge was like, "I, I actually beat John Cena, and I actually for that title, so it's proven." And then Triple H is like, "How many main events of WrestleMania did you compete in?" It's like, "Oh yeah, you were champion." Sorry, I slept for twenty minutes and missed your title reign. And then they're kind of looking at each other pretty mad. But both of them came up with this idea. How about a handicap match with the champ versus uh, Edge and Triple H? And they started kind of being on the same page a little bit more. And John Cena was like, see, the champ in me is telling me to run and not take this. And then he tries to leave. (laughs) Yeah, he tries to leave. He does the half leave. He comes back, but I'm a stupid son of a bitch, so, you know, and I'm a tough son of a bitch, so you know what, you're on! And the crowd kind of like that, but not that much. I don't, you know, I don't know, you like, <clears throat> what was going on with the crowd? I mean, they were hot, but, yeah, definitely a little weird. So, the match is set, John Cena, two-on-one, versus Edge, and the game. What a Triple weird main event. Yeah. What a strange look for the Fed. Yeah, it it was. <clears throat> uh, I, un, unlike most of my compatriots, I thought this was a pretty solid promo. Yeah, it was a little too long. They could have cut it down by like five, ten minutes. But I thought the gist of it, with the tension with Edge and Triple H, Cena kind of having the odds against him, I thought it was a solid start. I think the problem with it is that Edge just felt off, like, Everything he kept saying was just, like, he messed up his lines. He would just call, like, he's like, you and your chain brang gang, uh, Cena, I'm going to beat your ass. Yeah, I, I, I'm looking at his head, and I'm assuming he got his fucking brains knocked in a little too hard, and they just told him to go anyways, to be honest. Yeah, was Edge, was, weird. Edge was bleeding for no apparent reason during some of this. Yeah. Yeah, he was really, and Edge is pretty good at this point. Like, this is where he's, like, really came into himself. So, I don't know. I think he, I think he took a couple of head bumps that never got really checked too hard. And, well, he just wasn't feeling it or something. I don't know, but he was definitely off. I mean, it made Triple H look a lot stronger, which, kind of a shame. Yeah. Also, I mean, Triple H saying, hey, you know, I did tap in the main event, but where's your main event, Edge? You're just a little baby, Edge. Ed, Ed, Edge will love main event mania in a couple of years. But, it, I mean, you know, you know, like, he'll never do that. Fuck Edge. Well, yeah, but, I mean, come on. You, it, that's normal. They're trying to bury each other. They're both heels. It's like, you know, uh, are they supposed to... Then It's not like the old days where all the heels were buddies and all the, like, baby faces were buddies. You know, they, they don't like each other. This is ridiculous. How are they going to coexist? <clears throat> well, that's the question for tonight. Can they coexist? But for now, tag team title match? No, 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 no. What? No, no, no. <laughs> no, you don't get to let Nico do this apology, first of all. And second, there's like 17 signs we need to talk about. Oh, yeah, okay. Fair enough. Let's show okay. during this segment. First of all, this was ass. Triple H tapped out clean in the main event after <laughs> cheating. And is now be like, I'm so good and cool. You tapped. Shut the fuck up. Edge was right when he said, you lost. Get the fuck out of here. You're at the back of the line. You don't tap in the main event and then come out the next night. Like, actually, I'm cool, though. Ooh, Even yeah. Chicago chanted, you tapped out. And that this is, is a wretched hive of absolute fucking degenerates that will root for any shitter that is just remotely, like... I'm anti-authority or anti-the guy on top or whatever. They like CM Phil. That's the worst thing you can say about it. <laughs> anyway, yeah. this shit was ass. Now, on to what's really important, the sign. <laughs> there is still the poster hanging up of Randy Orton hitting the hmm up there. So that was <laughs> Love cool. Love to see it. Absolutely. One of the first signs I see is a sign that says, where's Charlie Haas? Ty, I, I can't believe you Listen. were here. Front row, <laughs> number one Charlie Haas fan tie. We'll get him soon. <laughs> okay. Uh, in the background of another sign, there, well, there are two edges a rated G sign. This one's the all right one. It says Edge is a rated G loser. Whoa. Really fucked Whoa. him up. One guy has a sign that says Vince, can I join the club? Oh. 
which is yeah. incredibly fucked up. Why would you want to kiss Vince McMahon's ass? You just... I hope that person is dead. And now, the best, <laughs> most devastating, most 2006 sign, right on hard cam, Edge is rated G for gay. Yeah! <laughs> I missed Damn, that one. Bro. But unfortunately, got we, got, we got no Damn. no kissing in the ring during that promo. Yeah. No! I was about to stay. It. I know. His locks were looking pretty fine, too. But yeah. no kisses Cena yet. And Ed, he could have kissed Cena, and he could have kissed Edge. He even does the kissy lips thing that to Cena, and they just don't kiss. It's bullshit. so fucking bullshit. Hey, also, look, they're inventing the gooning culture right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's the, who's the gooner of the of the group? Which one do you think? You know Raina. it's Edge. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it is so Edge. Who's the fake yeah, gooner? Those... Lita. Lita. <laughs> John Cena does make a herpes joke about Lita. He fit that one in there. Don't worry, yeah, everybody. He well, right still in. hates women. He still hates mm-hmm. women. That's what's all oh, about. Oh, I baby. forgot. About the best sign, somebody asking for an Ultimate Warrior versus Triple H rematch sign. Please. Was 2006? What was up, uh, Warrior? Yeah. What was Warrior doing? Was he still uh, saying a was bunch he... of homophobic slurs? On... I yeah. think he was. Was this when he fought Orlando Jordan in a high school gym? Probably. But I mean, Orlando Go Jordan's on the there. roster, so probably not. Okay. So, yeah, somewhere around there. But yeah, uh, this back. shit sucks. <laughs> And it took 40 minutes. Yeah. It, man, that took forever. And then every match on the show is just going to be less than five minutes to make up for that. I don't know. This 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 felt very weird, <laughs> the pacing of the show. Because now we got a world tag team title match. Kane and Big Show after creaming Carlito and Chris Masters and probably like one of the better matches of Mania, which is hard to say. Like, it was good. But now they have to fight the Spirit Squad, you know, Emerald's favorite group. Shut the fuck up. They are not. I hate yes. them so You'd much. You love them. You, you, can, love, you, you love them. You can recite no. every single member right now. I cannot, <laughs> actually. He did Emerald, right before do we think of him. Don't believe him, everyone. <laughs> yeah, Emerald, how do you feel about Nikki? Who? Dolph Ziggler. What about Mikey? No. My, oh, Mikey. So it was Mikey and Kenny in the ring. And wannabes. no, come on! This ain't they aren't three count. The match wasn't that bad. It's just like what can I say? It was just a Spirit Squad match where they all gang up on Big Show and Kane and bully the shit out of these two large men. But there's five, you know, little boys just beating the fuck out of their legs and just plowing, boo boo, just. Punching their kneecaps. At one point, I think the biggest spot of the match is when they all get a gang around Big Show and they all pick him up and throw him on the ground. Yeah, because the referees are the weakest sons of bitches of all time. The, man the second awesome. they get smacked uh, every, and get disoriented, uh, everyone just starts to cheat. Pisses me right off. Yeah. Good. Yeah, you just break it in half every single time. They can't. They can't handle anything. A, a yeah. light breeze. They fall over. That's how referees should be. <laughs> <laughs> um, the match wasn't like awful though. Like really, just I can't even remember what happened to Kane during the match. He kind of just got swept off the rug. Like poof. yeah, he basically they took him out to the ring and they did something to take. I think him it was out. like Johnny and Mitch and uh, who else? Nikki just yeah beat the shit out of Kane. Yeah. Uh, uh, after after they uh, did the, they threw a big show in the air and fell back down. Kenny gets up <laughs> on the top rope, huge leg drop, awesome move. I'm sure his uh his spine in the next twenty years is going to be great. Pinfall honestly, really good. Pinfall, and we got new tag team champions, the Spirit Squad. Yeah, yeah that not, was a clean leg drop though. I'm not gonna lie, it was very I was, clean. I, yeah, that looked good. That looked like main event level leg drops. I was like, all right, you know what? That's good. That's good. You guys deserve that one. They have the one and, moves. You know, <laughs> but unfortunately, uh, you know, it's, a Canaanite status has been revoked. Canaanite oh, no, no my Canaanite. No, nah, we're done now. What? We're, yep. That's Kane's awful. dead to me. Big Show's dead to me. 
Paul White's dead to me. Glenn Jacobs is dead to me. Well, that's fine. Dead. Damn. That's fine. We get. We don't have to talk about Glenn Jacobs. What about no more oh. BS, Paul White? How'd oh no, we got to bring him? him back. We got to bring him back. <laughs> get him in here. Get him in the uh, Hall of Fame. Are we, we going to stop my five minute segment on Knoxville no. politics? Oh boy. Yeah, we'll get into that on the the after show. Yeah, excellent. Thirty thousand patrons. We'll get Nico's politics live on air. Yeah. Well, no, no, not my politics. No, just your politics. No, no, no. Discussion on politics. Nope. Your at personal politics. Pat- <laughs> at 17 patrons, wrestling with dialectics will happen. We're bringing it back. Come really? On. That was like 10 years ago. We're going to do it again? Yeah. yeah. Sick. <laughs> yeah, you threw all the recordings of it in a dumpster and called <laughs> me a poopoo head. It it's true. Horrible. <laughs> All right. I just yeah, two quick things here. There's there's a set of signs that go together by two I'm guessing friends standing together. Uh one of them says 268 days until Tim proposes. Tim. And then the one right next to it says don't do it, Tim. <laughs> I don't know That's what awesome. the story is here. That's a very specific amount of days until this Tim person proposes to whoever. I hope they weren't watching the show. I want. We need to track those people down and just see what the fuck is going on if there. If you know any Tims or are Tim, uh, throw us a throw us a comment down there in the comment section yeah. down below. Yes, all Tims, please send us your social security number and date of birth and your first pet's name, and we will get you on the show. Sick. Yeah. All, and yeah, and we have the worst joke of the night, I think. And this is a have. This is always a contested category. After the Spirit Squad win, Jerry Lawler says, even Ripley's won't believe this. Yeah. <laughs> and somebody please just get rid of these commentators. <laughs> I... And I heard on the recap segments Jim Ross on WrestleMania and was devastated when it was still Joey Styles and Coach and Jerry. <laughs> I couldn't believe Dude, it. On Raw. Same. Emerald? Not just Kenny and Mikey are tag team champions. They all five are tag team champions because of the Freebird oh, rule. Hell yeah. Because Emerald doesn't know about that, so I, we have to talk about that. Okay, yeah. Freebird rule states if you are in a group and you display Freebird rules, it means all five are actually tag team champions, and you can switch out which two defend. Yep. So anytime they can just switch up who defends the belt. Emerald. Well, yeah, they just can't Before do the match. it mid-match. Yeah. 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 I understand that. What yeah. I don't understand is how could they let this happen? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I mean, dude, come on. Nikki needs his first belt. Fuck it's him. true. The Hall of Fame Fuck career. Nikki? Uh-oh. Some of the smack-up gents might have some issues with that statement. Yeah, well, Joe, Joe defected, so fuck him. Fuck That's Joe. right. Uh, we hate him. We got John Cena. Facing Triple H and Edge, we got the the little promo for it, like the little uh, vignette card, and it looks good. I like the motions on it. It doesn't look fucked like it does on SmackDown. I don't know what's up with SmackDown's editing, but Raw's got it. The iconic, like rectangles with the moving, uh, wrestler pro like pictures. Such a good thing. Yeah, I love gifts. it. The gifts, yeah. The, the iconic rectangles. The iconic. That's right, oh, man. my bad. No, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. Rhombuses. I apologize. <laughs> Rhomboid. So much better than. If so the we... episode title isn't Iconic Rhombus, you fucked up. Okay. <laughs> I'll... Editor Ty, Iconic Rhombus. And I'm going to cut all this part out <laughs> except for me saying Rhombus. Iconic no, we Rhomboid. Won't. Yeah, you're right. Maria's here. Welcome back, Queen. She's been. How long has it been <laughs> since Maria's been here? Not long enough. And <laughs> she's here to interview yeah. the new tag team champions, and they all just fucking scream into the mic individually. And maybe I'll put it into the the episode right here. Like, whoo! Honestly, I love it. Yeah, it was it was loud, and they just started going. Ah! An it was interview. Loud, obnoxious, and fucking. They're my it was my the goats. One. It was Kenny, uh, Mikey, just. The fucking face he put on when he was saying his name. Mikey! 
Uh, it was so douchey. I loved it. I, I thought it, it was great heat. That That's like the heat you want with the fucking uh, Spirit Squad. Guys, we got 35 million page views on WWE.com last night. A new record. Whoa. A new record. They told us about it. You know I what? saw that 2006 webpage, and, like, I felt my bones shift. Do you think they use GoDaddy? Probably. Oh, they have to. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, it's, like, legally bound. Yeah. Uh, uh, David Otunga would not let them not. I was quite disappointed when they didn't. <laughs> Man, it was just the fucking... And then we have this long segment of recapping Mania's uh, Money in the Bank match. It's just like, why are they filling out time? Do they have nothing set for this Raw? But then, one of a kind! One of a kind! Listen, Rob Van Dam, he shows up. He needs you to know that he won. But how did he win? He climbed the ladder. Mm -hmm. Through the glass ceiling that is the WWE to get the money in the bank. But he doesn't need to turn it in like that loser Edge did last year. He could do it whenever he wants. His timing couldn't be better. And his timing is extreme. Oh, what do you say? What'd his you timing's say? extreme! Extreme! Extreme. That has nothing to do with anything That's... in the future. Don't worry no, about it. Rob's no, just not he's off his rocker. He's just excited. He's excited that he he got all the way out from Battle Creek, Michigan, and now he has he got a briefcase. High whatever. And he, oh yeah, yeah, he's a little high, a little high. He up. got the briefcase. Well, yeah, through the glass ceiling. Extreme, extreme, extreme. extreme! <laughs> but yeah, that's I mean that's what happens. They, yeah, that was less, what. Less, less we also forget. He didn't just climb the ladder through the glass ceiling. He also fell back off the ladder through the glass ceiling. Yeah, that's where you get glass ankles <laughs> and you break them. Just like it's me. True. Oh, wait, hang on. Let, let me do a better bone-breaking uh, take. Ah! My foot! <laughs> oh! oh no. Ah! no, his foot is shattered! This WWE <laughs> Slam of the Week is brought to you by Lucky Number Slevin! <laughs> Guys, yeah, remember? I don't know how they lost the no. sticker sponsorship, but they fucking did. You remember when Kane and Big Show won that match against Chris Masters and Carlito? Why would they recap yeah. it now? <laughs> They're not the champs no more. Who cares? Yeah, that's... Rip. Thank you, Lucky Number Slevin, for sponsoring this podcast. I mean, wait a minute. Uh, uh, that ain't real. I'm just fucking with y'all. The Masterpiece... That, is that the transition? <laughs> That's the transition, huh? All right. You got it. Editor Ty, you keep that dead air in. I did that intentionally. <laughs> anyway, we have Chris Masters coming out to fight some guy. I will talk about him later, but important to note, they do not give this person a name nope. on the show. <laughs> yeah, he just comes out and dies. Yeah, just bald man in black trunks. Is in the ring already, and Chris Masters comes out. Jonathan Coachman is trying to defend Chris Masters' actions last night and say, it's fine. Him and Carlito are still friends. I swear. Chris Masters gets in the ring. Guy tries to front on him. Chris Masters beats the shit out of him, puts him in the master lock in a match that takes about 40 seconds. I thought it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I looked they... away for like 40 seconds. It was over. <laughs> yeah, the best Chris Masters match of all time. The announcers literally say, we didn't even get a name for that guy. Oh, well, fuck him, I guess. <laughs> oh, hold oh. up. Recording time. Hey, Ty. Oh, I I oh. Recording time. Okay, oh, no. cut back out. Cut back out. What were you saying, Martin? <laughs> you keep all that in. You keep my death in. Oh. This is what... <laughs> that was me as soon as the next thing happened, because Carlito comes out again. <laughs> Chris Masters is as pissed as I am. About this whole thing. Carlito comes out and he's chewing the apple. No. And he stares at Chris Masters. Is he going to do it? But then he spits it on Guy. And he hugs Chris Masters. They're still friends. Hell it's yeah. adorable. Jonathan Coachman is so excited. But Aww. then Chris Masters, he turns around. Carlito grabs him. 
hits the bat cracker on him. How could he do this? How could Carlito turn on his best friend who he has never betrayed at all in the show ever before? He yeah. gets the apple from off the ground. He throws it at Chris Masters and spits more of the apple on him. Devastating. Chris Masters and Carlito done as a tag team. <laughs> Probably going to feud now. How and that then? sucks, but at least they keep themselves into one segment. I don't have to deal with two segments of them. Absolutely devastating. I Jonathan Coachman started sobbing. I started sobbing. I couldn't Truly believe it. Truly in shambles. That's our guy right there. I but, I still am waiting for to like remember a Carlito match, so I mean there. to be honest, uh maybe this will be the match. I don't know. Uh, it was okay. It was a fine segment. I had to look it up because I've never heard it being called the backcracker before, but you're right. I've only heard it as called the backstabber, and I understand now. I hope, I hope yeah, they just I change wrote, it right now. I hope they yeah, I wrote backstabber, but I remembered they called it backcracker. Backcracker. And I'm a professional. Yeah. Well, I always I, quote what the WWE I, says. <laughs> it, backcracker's kind of lame. I don't know. It's like... I don't know. My, oh, my moves gonna make your back feel good. Can like, I add a, like a back like breaking noise, like a bone breaking? Yeah, Emerald, really right there. Yeah, I got it. Oh God! Oh, oh my back! Oh, oh God! Oh, Ty, Ty, no! Oh Carlito my God! Broke into Ty's house. Oh. Ty has been found uncool, tragic. <laughs> so I looked into who this guy was. Honestly, during the match, because I assumed nothing would happen, and I was right. This is, according to the Pro Wrestling Fandom Wiki, which I just assume is accurate, this is somebody known as Eric Priest, who worked Midwest Indies for a while, like, 99, I think he had a match in 2020. He's just, he was around for a while, and he was one time the AAW Heritage Champion, Woo! which is... A promotion outside of Chicago, and they have had former champions uh, Penta El Zero Miedo, MJF, and Colt Cabana. Oh wow! So all right, I have never heard of it, but they've had some people of renown in that company. So okay. shout out to Eric Priest or whoever decided to give you a shout out and lie on the Pro Wrestling Wiki and Cage Match. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. That man's big too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Big guy. Oh Yeah, he kind of he kind of looked like Desmond Wolf from twenty ten TNA. All my twenty ten TNA fans hit me in the comments. Woo! That's about... a reference for everybody. I yeah. I truly pray that one day we'll get a twenty ten TNA pod. But speaking of prayers, Sean Hold Michaels on a is second. here. Hold right on. No, that. I had yeah, it. You I wait. had the transition. God damn it. <laughs> you fuckers. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you I had to do this because I couldn't let this one go. Right before the Sean segment, they had a uh, a little promo for that Shine Down CD. Did I dare you? <laughs> yeah. So I listened to the album. No, why would you do that? <laughs> I don't know, but here's my quick. Oh, we got an album review. review. Let's go. It is three parts. One part shitty Shine Down. Other parts, uh, basically a sound god and cheap knockoff, and then <gasps> 2005 generic metal. That's it. That's the album. Don't listen to it. Don't let them lie to and you. And what I was going to interrupt with was that Eric Priest beat Jimmy Jacobs for the belt and then lost it to Jimmy Jacobs. Damn, that's so, crazy. Well, Much Martin knows like, that. <laughs> yeah. Jimmy. But I have been betrayed. Nico and Ty are just like Judas. From Bible. You know who loves Bible? Sean Michaels. Yeah, that little Sean guy. Uh, that little guy. That little critter. He's just a sexy so, boy. My guy, <laughs> boy toy. Sean Michaels, the heartbreak kid, comes out, nice suit. He's happy. He brought hell to Vince McMahon. And he loved it. He the as as the the announcers, uh, while shitty as they may be, they did make a point that he rode the highway to hell and made it back in one piece. 
he brought the pain and the suffering to the McMahons, and he's like, well, you know what? Uh, the the bit now is, I guess, is that everyone wants to beat up John Cena. Why can't I beat up John Cena? And then immediately after he says that, that little freak of butter, Shane McMahon, <laughs> uh, walks out, and <laughs> he's like, Given given him the eye, and it's like, Shane, what are you doing here? It's like it is my privilege to to re welcome my dad, Vince McMahon, and Vince McMahon stumbles out in a neck brace, he's and broken. he's a broken man. He is angry. He's on medication heavily, and it's. Oh, all the all the booing comes out. It's like fuck you, Vince. Ha ha. Vince got just. I saw a sign. Vince needs Jesus, which couldn't have been a more relevant sign that time. Because Vince starts going off it's like you. No one can beat the McMahons. We even though Shawn Michaels literally just did that, and it's like you had you had divine intervention. After after uh, Shawn Michaels was like, "Well, I have two words for you. Suck it." Chicago <gasps> loved that. <laughs> Thank you. Vince is like, "You had divine intervention. It was it was a handicap match of me versus you and God." And I, oh, I'm I became a broken man after he said that. Of of all things, yes, God Almighty would would interfere with a wrestling match against the likes of you, Vince Turkey Face McMahon. And so, in in retribution, uh, he says that uh, Shawn Michaels will not uh, be allowed to challenge John Cena for the title, the championship, but instead uh, a tag team uh, match. Of Shane and Vince versus Shawn Michaels, the Heartbreak Kid, and God himself. And everyone was confused. Shawn Michaels like, okay, you're crazy. You're on medication, but okay. And I was just like... Huh? You missed something very important. It's not ah, just I... it's not just God and Shawn Michaels versus oh. Vince and Shane. It's Vince and his, the product of his semen. Oh, Shane. that's right. <laughs> yes, I the was... product of his semen. <laughs> his son, Shane McMahon. And the I... second he said that, she was like, "What the fuck?" I was so excited that it was this episode. <laughs> when it came out the neck brace, I Dude. thought it was. I have seen this so many times. <laughs> Just a legendary sound bite in wrestling history. <laughs> I'll probably I'll probably throw it in right here. Cool. This was the, his face when he saw the gat. The gat. Wrestling. And the I'll just gat. look at just look at Sean's face. Oh <laughs> uh, man, you look know. At, look at Vince's face. <laughs> Watching this. I, I now feel that, you know, it, Mr. McMahon, the character, was not an exaggeration of Vince McMahon. We just got to see the real Vince McMahon. And yeah. The fakeness in behind yeah. Us. Vince booked his own son to kiss his own ass and also wanted to do an incest angle with his own daughter. Freak. You mean his innocent Freak, daughter surely. that is six months pregnant yep. and she had to witness him die? Even so. If only he died. Oh, Mr. I, it, hold on. Mr. Regret, all right. Emeralds forgot a very awesome, very important thing. It was where he said, uh, You I... shoved my son Shane all the way into my rectal cavity. This that was true. a bit of an exaggeration. I did not want to touch on that. <laughs> but it happened. <laughs> I guess. I thought he was going to say, guess, You made I him he... kiss my keister or something like that. But he's like, You shoved him no. up my asshole. No. Remember, he's on medication. Heavily. He's in a neck brace. What medication so, like, he's on? <sighs> rectum. Oh, he's on the rectum. Rectum Prozac. He... Rectum Prozac. Oh, well, man. 
Once again, I will say Mr. McMahon is still probably one of the greatest heel characters on any wrestling TV. He sucks. Terrible person. But well, it's I easy when you're the most evil man in the world. It's true. But man, uh, yes, it... ladies and gentlemen listening at home, uh, our recording time right now is uh, February 11th, 2024. So take Please that as well. That. Please redact that. Anybody want to yeah, have a Super Bowl it. prediction? Emerald, give me your Super Bowl prediction right now. Uh, Usher. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> so we back in the ring. <laughs> Mine is Jared Goff comes in for the interference, knocks Mahone out. That's right. 49ers win. 49ers win. We're back. And, and coach. And I think that's a good uh, segue point into. Nico and his uh, favorite all-time wrestlers, the women. Thank you, right. you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We got an exciting women's match. Oh, women. it's a tag team? Oh, It's a tag <sighs> team. Okay. It's a tag team. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, so we have a tag team match. Do you want me to tell you who it is? <laughs> well, I know who fought in it. We got <laughs> Trish Jad is coming out. Again, star. Looking like a star, acting like a star. We got Toy Wilson with Minnie Mouse. Wait, Ooh. I'm sorry. Uh, I've been told quietly and privately that it was actually a dog dressed as Minnie Mouse. What? Oh boy. Yeah, I know. I couldn't believe it. Are either. you serious? Yep, coming out to the stage, fighting Candace Michelle, who I am now positive. That they just have the same singer on both Toy Wilson's and Candice Michelle's. And she must have not been paid that much because I could barely tell the difference. It's like the same melody <laughs> of like singing. It's like the same. It, it, like you could probably match it up in a fucking mix thing. It, it It is stunning how lazy it sounds when put back to back. And then Trish Stratus comes out. Wait a minute. I thought I already said that. That's weird. Why she's got the belt. Oh, wait. It's Mickey James, dressed exactly like Trish Stratus, even with the blonde hair. That was a really and fucked she... look she got. No, oh, it was great. Psycho alert. I loved it. Ooh. But I love the psychos. Anyways. Psycho I'm a psycho. We get into this match. <sighs> it's a Nico match. Up. Yeah, it that yawn is probably the best explanation of this match I had. I mean, some good <laughs> stuff. Trish does that great like little head scissors thing where she kind of tosses you. That was good. Um, Toy was competent, fine. There's a nice little interesting thing where like Mickey James wasn't there with Toy Wilson, and she kept staring down uh, Trish past Toy, which that would have been a great time to capitalize. But I guess like Toy Wilson was just fucking confused. Um. Then, like, she kind of gets, like, Tori out of the way. She gives uh, Trish Stratus a big kick to her quad, rupturing her quad instantly. You see Trish fall off the ringside. She's just grabbing that quad, being like, oh, man, is this what Triple H felt all those four years ago? And basically, the team of Mickey James beats the shit out of uh, Toy Wilson, gets the pin, laughs. Says, I'm better than you to Trish. Trish just kind of stands there like she doesn't care. This was a bad Trish moment. Like, Mickey James just basically beat her, beat them in a tag match. She's like, I'm better than you, Trish. And Trish is just kind of standing there like she's bored. Like, and she doesn't know what she's doing. I mean, she's honestly, walking though. Around the finger, and I don't blame her because I don't think they told her what was going to happen this segment. Because when Mickey James came out, she did look a little like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> like, legitimately. She, so, uh, I don't know. Like, she just looked fucked. I don't know. There's something about the way her makeup was or something with the blonde hair with, like, the brunette underneath. But something mm-hmm. just had a real fucked look to it. And she didn't look right. And, well, I, th- and I felt like it would have been better if Mickey just fought Tori in a singles match and they came out as managers. Because this match was fucking... Who cared? Nothing. It was nothing, man. Like, oh, it was like a and what a minute and a half. I wonder if this was a punishment for that spot the but, day before. But she won, Ooh, though. Maybe. But Mickey but, won. Yeah. So, like, but, I don't... But, but but if you remember, she got basically fucking screamed at when she went backstage. True. So, 
So this might have been like a punishment thing. Let's make you look fucking like of terrible version of Tristratus on purpose. And yeah. It, you know, and <clears throat> like I didn't even remember Mickey James actually having the fucking belt. I didn't even remember her winning that match. So honestly, I don't think she's going to hold on to it for very long. Which is a shame because she's good. Do you want to put some money on that? I bet you I bet you ten fun bucks that she's gonna keep the belt for a little bit. Twenty fun bucks. Twenty? Okay, deal. You know, shake on it. Shake, shake, shake. That was a good shake. My head hurts though. Yeah, well, you know what? I, I I'm sorry, I gripped it a little too tight. That's my bad. Yeah, you raised my blood pressure to enormous amounts. Look, I'm sorry. I was trying to have a strong handshake, okay? Sometimes okay, I okay, control. dude. I'm, I, I didn't... I'm sorry. Dude. <laughs> look, I'm sorry. My, you know, I didn't cut my nails either. That's my fault. Yeah, that really... Yeah, my hands are bleeding now. Look, look. Doesn't help it's with the just blood a pressure. little blood. I mean, I can lick it off if you need, you know... Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you, can you give a little lick to it? Yeah. Oh, there thanks, man. Yeah, Appreciate it. Yeah, uh, no, ow, no ow. What, dude, what did you eat today? Uh, I, I don't know. It's poison ivy. Oh, <laughs> my head is. Uh, oh no. Oh fuck. Still the best Damn. deal in the game, folks. Still the best deal in the game. Let's check in on Martin. Is he okay? <laughs> yeah. Sick, but you know who's not okay? Chavo Guerrero. He's very. Oh, boy. <laughs> he's, he's like Eddie. Guess what? Ray did it for you. I'm going to do a little something different. I'm going to win the Intercontinental Championship in your honor, big dog. I love you, Eddie. Mwah, mwah, mwah. I'm so fucking sick of this shit. But hey, Chavo's heading to the ring. Guess what? Backlash is sponsored by Topps Trading Cards. And now we got Shelton Benjamin here, baby. I miss Mama Benjamin so much. They even mentioned He's on her. the Titantron still. Yeah. And but she's not here. It's so upsetting. Even Coach made a, a reference to it. And he goes, I miss Mama. And Jerry goes, I don't miss her at all. Fuck Jerry. Dumbass. Um, This match was fine. I don't know. It Was this the match of the night? Would you say? Oh, easy. <laughs> yeah. Easy. They did a lot of cool moves. A lot of big uppercuts. Chavo was uh, stomping a mud hole into Shell at one point. Referee comes in. The crowd was getting really into it there wasn't a whole lot to it. Like, just like, you know, big elbow drop from Chavo, big drop kick from Chavo. He had a lot of moves in, surprisingly. But Sheldon was just too big, too strong, too athletic. Throws him around. But then wait. He misses the stinger splash. Chavo comes off the ropes, hits a crazy leg scissors on him. Whoa, whoa. He's going to get that three amigos on him. And he got it. Chavo goes up to the top rope and he fucking just flops on the ground. And then T-Bone and it's over. Sheldon retains. Sheldon gets out of the ring. And did they cut the commercial or is this all one take? I think it was one take where the crowd is cheering for Chavo. And then Chavo looks fucking just depressed. He's sad. He points up to the sky. I'm so sorry, Eddie. And the camera just follows his face all the way walking up the ramp. And he even fucks up and goes the wrong way. And then he has to walk back and then go up the ramp. And it's just a weird moment. And then they cut to an ad. And then, guys, WWE.com Unlimited special moment. And he's in the back. He goes, guys, I let everybody down. I let Eddie down. I let the Guerrero family down. Maybe I'm not supposed to be a wrestler. I quit. Yeah, Chavo was, like, actually crying. Yeah, he looked very a sad. a lot of the end of this. It was really uncomfortable. He put on a pretty good match. Like, it's probably his best yeah. match since I've seen this year of him. Yeah, yeah, it was a good match. People actually did stuff and were athletic. I was shocked. I haven't seen that on Raw in weeks. <laughs> if Rob Van Dam isn't fighting, I don't see it. Or Shelton, I don't see it, basically. Yeah, and then they've had Shelton fight, like, Big Show and... Like Schnitzky and Ric Flair, so Sheldon actually having an opponent that can do moves, you know, yeah. can have a good match. And it's crazy. How long has Shelton had the sunglasses and the chain? Cause it's a good look for him. I don't know. Was he? Did he have that look with Mama? He, no, I don't think he did with Mama. I don't know when he started, if he did, if she left, so, but I noted it this week that he had the sunglasses and the chain. He, it looks good on him. 
Thank you, Big Shelton. Keep that belt for us. Woo! You're talking about... Hold on. Okay. Get, Rick, you go to the corner okay. real quick. Sorry. You talking... Oh, hi, oh. hi, baby Rick. Sorry. So, <laughs> baby Rick. Okay, yeah, new bit audience. Baby Rick Flair. <laughs> you have you heard my son David Flair? <laughs> Woo! All right, thank you, baby Ric Flair. We'll call on you later, maybe. You talking about how Backlash is brought to us by Topps Trading Cards reminds me that during the women's match, we ran down who Raw is brought to you by. Oh, shit. Start, starting off, we've got Bowflex. Yes. It's quality gym equipment. Uh, if you're trying to build strength, it can hold at least 229 pounds. The movie Lucky Number Slevin, oh, we Burger King, and Starburst. This new Raw is brought to you by. I, Thank you to all of those companies. The way it was edited in there, it's just like they took the Google Images like square like like image like that you would see and just plopped it on there. No editing. Like that's that's it. It's Burger King. Yeah, it was a little squished. Way. It was a little squished. Like they had to like, oh shit, we have to. Oh, there you go, Burger King. Have it your way. Also, during this match, there's a sign that says "Maddie F fears Mr. Destiny." It's Emerald is our resident Mr. Destiny. What did you do to Maddie F in Chicago? I can't say. Why can't you say? All right. Hey, wait, hold up, hold up. Uh, yeah, he can't say. Martin, he can't say. Okay. It's a shame, but I can't say. Woo! <laughs> I'm back from the cage. Keep that, I'm out of the keep corner all now. Of that in. I'm out of the corner keep now. Keep Ric Flair in. <laughs> Keep the whatever the fuck you just hey. tried to do in. Keep all of that in. Woo! I'm smacking my arms. <laughs> I'm getting the blood flowing. Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I'm in Chicago, baby. Woo! I'm in Chicago, baby. Woo! Who's this guy coming down to the ring? Oh, it's Armando Alejandro. <laughs> He is from Cuba. Listen here, Pat. Listen here, pal. <laughs> Don't be walking in here getting in my ass. <laughs> Look, he grew up watching Ric Flair on fuzzy television. And now he's a businessman. Yeah. yeah. He was there to introduce the man who's going to change the face of Raw. And the WWE. Holy cow. You better not be Rick who Flair I think has, it is. Ric Flair has <laughs> overstayed his welcome. Who hey. does he bring out, Emerald? He brings out Umaga. Who the heck is who that? I can oh my god. Describe as uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson's Maui from Disney's Moana. You see, here's the thing <laughs> about that. <laughs> Woo! He he just has that that Samoan strong man build. I got I gotta break what's, it to you, big dog. What's the, <laughs> he is what's, the, what's up, he's baby in the Samoan player? bloodline? Woo! Hey, sorry, I don't know who that was, but he's in the Samoan bloodline. Woo! <laughs> Actually I have no idea who this is. Oh my god, he's killing me. Oh shit. Oh, <laughs> I'm about to. <laughs> what? You're about to what? I'm about to. This the the baby Ric Flair bit. Dude, thank you. So so Umaga, Umaga comes running down the ring with all the power of Moana or whatever Emerald just said. Yo, uh, you're the announcers just start screaming. I don't know who that is or what that is. But he is big. <laughs> but he's big. Uh, and he just runs down the ring and just. Yeah, he just squashes Ric Flair in the ring, you know, like any run in during a promo always goes. He just ran in, beat him up a bunch, slammed him to the ground, mm -hmm. uh, did a little ooh ah, uh, a little ooh ah, and then they just kind of ran away. <laughs> like that was all right. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not forgetting anything. Am I baby Flair? I mean, you were there. No, that was you pretty good. But like, yeah, you know, I, I ran this guy like one time or not. Oh my. You remember, remember? I, I actually enjoyed Umaga. I hope I get to see him <laughs> in the future. 
You Fuck will. You, baby Flair. You're welcome. Why did you call Armando Estrada a nothing having island jumping Cuban, Ric Flair? I gotta go, guys. Hey, <laughs> bye, guys. Oh, he, he's dodging the question. Go, questions. Michigan. I, go, U of M. I love Jim I Harbaugh. Don't wanna blow up a, I don't want to blow up the spot, but what, yeah. What, baby, what you... baby Flair was pretty rude to Omaga. Yeah. I got the wings, it. baby. Go get some. Five for a dollar. Yep. Maybe Ric Flair was found dead in Miami next week. He'll never be back on hey, the show. Hey, guys, where, who was that? <laughs> it's Ric Flair. He just flopped I, out of the room, dude. What was that? Oh, that was I Baby Flair. Oh, that was yeah, weird. We sh- no, I'm not, not, not a fan. I just not went to the fan. bathroom. Make sure to lock the door next time. Yeah, okay. I yeah, it yeah. was it was a rough spot for a minute there. Yeah. Hey, you know who's in the yeah. house tonight? Ozzy Guillen from the White Sox. Oh. Fuck the White no, Sox. World Championship Boo. White Sox manager, Isaac Yen. Boo. Yeah. We hate the White Sox. Oh, we do? All right. Boo. Boo. <laughs> Fuck the White Sox. Get them out of here. I thought you said the Red Sox. What is this? What is this? We're in Chicago, Nico. We don't care about no yeah. Red Sox here. I, I I don't know the difference. I mean, white, red. Sox. Shouldn't we like all the Sox? Baseball I fun. I mean, only if they're made out of a good material. Yeah, that's the point. Good quality. Fair enough. Now it's time for main event Marty to come in, swipe everything, and give himself the rub. That's right, main event Marty, it is you. Yeah, main event Marty. Woo. Before Woo. the main event, we get a little segment backstage mm-hmm. where Hunter and Edge both act like, hey, we didn't mean what we said. You're cool, actually. And they both offer to let the other have the pin. And they're being very nice <laughs> to each other in the most disingenuous way possible. And then Edge and Lita walk off. Lita gives Hunter a sassy face behind his back. And Hunter looks back like, frick these freaking hex. I'm going to frick them. And then we hear Edge's music. He comes out. As this entrance starts, there is nine minutes left on the timeline. So I'm thinking this ends in a DQ after about three minutes. Will that happen, dear listener? Stay tuned to find out. Middle Mid-Triple H entrance. We get a commercial break. We come back. His music is still playing, and now John Cena comes out. Crowd is in shambles. They hate him. Somebody has a sign that says Triple H, King of Queens. Oh, my God. Where is my... getting weary. Where is my Paul tight. Bart chaperone crossover? <laughs> when will this happen? <laughs> I Soon. need that movie. <laughs> Listener, you've probably heard our chaperone review by now. Yes. Go be back hard. and listen to that, and... In 2075, if we have 9,423 patrons specifically, I will review every Paul Blart movie within Ooh. four minutes Ooh. while while dipping my hand in boiling LSD. Anyway, <laughs> oh. with about six minutes left in the show, the bell rings. So this is the quality that we're going to get for this. Edge and John Cena start out with a lockup. John Cena wins the lockup, and he just starts smacking the welts that are all over Edge's back. Edge is devastated. Hunter is perched on the ring post like a gargoyle, just watching all of this happen for most of the match. We get some headlocks. Uh, yeah, you know, Edge fires Cena off. Cena goes to bounce off the ropes. Lita grabs his leg. Oh no, how could she do this? Edge takes over. Cena sucks chant from the horrendous people of chicago illinois rain down for a few minutes cena eventually takes back over throws edge out of the ring triple h goes from gargoyle stance to standing on the second rope stares john cena down for a minute jumps into the ring keeps staring at him and then edge comes from behind to hit john cena it's at this point i don't know if they mentioned it earlier but apparently john uh, triple h and edge don't need to tag in and out for this handicap match That's not usually how that works, but okay, I guess. So, Triple H again just watches Edge try to fight John Cena. John Cena again takes over. Gets distracted by Triple H doing the same bit he did last time. But John, you can't fool John Cena twice. He he feels Edge coming from behind him. And he spins out of the way. And baits Edge into spearing Triple H. And then while Triple H is dead, John Cena gets his shit in. And starts beating up Edge with all of his stuff. Triple H recovers and then also starts beating up Edge. John Cena is confused, but then is happy about it. It's like, oh, hell yeah, cool. This is awesome. So Edge is a dead corpse. 
John Cena goes to hit the five knuckle shuffle as Triple H is just standing over Edge's body. But as he's about to drop the fist, Hunter grips him up, puts him in the pedigree position, hits it. One, two, three. Woo! Triple H wins. He is the game. This was his plan, maybe, question mark. Edge looks upset, but also like, I guess we won. Maybe this was the plan you had. Is this weird reverse psychology? I don't know. Martin is pissed the hell off because this means I have to see John Cena and Triple H more. Yep. I hope to God they at least <laughs> make it a triple threat. So it's two people John Cena will not stop fighting instead of one. And then maybe between the three of them, they can have a decent match. But I feel like it's just going to be John Cena, Triple H again. And I will kill myself. Hell yeah. Also, you know, Triple H said, Brother, I'm not tapping out in the main event of Mania without getting my, my win back, pal. Give me a win back. And they said, we can't do that. And they said, all right, how about if I, what if we have Edge on your team? He goes, oh, okay. Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. So now Triple H is the only one standing after that fucking match. So stupid. <laughs> <laughs> fucking asshole. <laughs> Dude, like I was so... Uh, excited is not the right word, but I was like, okay, uh, Triple H, John Cena are going to like team up and just job Edge out. This is an interesting angle. Oh, no, never mind. Yeah. Yeah, we <laughs> like, just got we got Triple H running the show, saying that my belt. Yep. Nico's ecstatic. He's he's doing fucking Gears of War cartwheels around the, the room, going yippee, 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 as Triple H gets another title match. Uh, no, no. I just said he at least he's trying more. <laughs> nah, he ain't trying more. You're just he, he's, he's you're trying just more than the more, fucking Cena match. Uh huh. Look, look. Trust me. Even if it's only three percent more, it's fucking better than where we were at. Okay, positives. I'm looking for positives in the show. I don't know that 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 that, that episode was pretty shit. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they gave up. They're like, what do we do? Uh give give Spirit Squad the belts. Uh how about uh Honestly This kind of feels like if they had a WrestleMania night too and they just kinda were like, We don't know what to do. Yeah, hold on. Why were there two matches in this episode? Uh or I should say three? There were multiple matches in this episode where a championship title was on the line. Why and what the fuck? Um, this is this is this is not a big event. Like, why is this random episode after the big event? Oh, the new champion, new champions. Like, huh? Raw, yeah, Raw what? after Mania actually is a pretty big event. It didn't feel it's like usually, it this time, but it gets yeah, it that doesn't. Way. Yeah. This this is a pretty subdued one, but Raw after Mania is usually where they do stuff like this and have new people debut. It's the reset for the next year of the show. I hate that. I hate that so much. Yeah. Who, who do I have to strangle? Well, Vincent let's... Kennedy McMahon. Motherfucker! And you have God to go through. It. You have to go through also, a John litany Cena of people. Should not have lost that. That was such. That was such a towel throw in after <laughs> Triple H hit him with the pedigree. Like, motherfucker, you can get back up from that. Look at you. You're built like a fucking bull. You voiced one in a movie. There he is, Ferdinand. <laughs> you didn't have to you didn't have to name drop it. There he is. Look at him. No look at no, he's on the screen right now. Look at him. Editor Ty, yeah, have that shit up. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> it's it's just it gets... But hey, a lot of entertaining signs in the crowd. Re a lot, actually, a, in fact, too many signs. <laughs> oh my, my brothers. It'll get so, way worse. There It'll... were so many, I could not keep track of all of them. This is I... only the start of the end. <laughs> you mean the start <gasps> oh, of the beginning? No, I forgot. I forgot the most important thing. Oh, uh, what was that? Editor Ty. Yes. Fucking... Uh, Armando Alandro Estrada, in uh -huh. his pocket, he had a bunch of, like, Cuban cigars that just uh -huh. look like sausages. <laughs> and that was raw down. <laughs> that was I can't even. 